What's up guys? This is Brave and I'm here to review one of the shows that's practically my guilty pleasure. And that's going to be Selling Sunset, baby. This was season six. And I must say, was the season good? It was cool. But baby, there were so many issues that I had with practically everybody on the show. So let's get right into it. First things first, we got to talk about how Christine is missing. Christine is no longer on the show. Honestly, for the past two seasons, the show was about Christine and all the things that she had going on. Or should I say the things that she would say about the other girls and how they hated her. That was pretty much the entire season four and five. But baby, I was so concerned that we were not going to have anyone that's going to argue. I thought that this was just going to be like, you know, everybody getting along. How is this going to work, right? They surprised me. A few people stepped up to try to be the villain. And I'm like, you know what? Some of y'all are good at it. Some of y'all are not. But baby, Christine, I'm sorry you weren't really missed as far as the drama. But I do miss you having comebacks for these girls as well as the outfits. Because I'll be honest, if it wasn't for Christine, I honestly don't feel like all the ladies would have stepped their fashion up the way that they have. Because Christine was the first one to really step the fashion up. But oh, we'll talk about the fashions because baby, they were so out of pocket this season with some of those outfits. Oh my God. But yeah, Christine was missing, but let's talk about the new additions. Actually, before I even mention that, um, I can't even remember the Latina lady who came in. She was no longer there. Um, Maya, of course, y'all know she went to go move across the country. She's no longer there. I think they did have like a glimpse of her. Yeah, they did at um, Heather's baby shower because she said that she was trying to have another baby. Um, yeah. I said, look at them trying to shake it up. So as far as the new girls, y'all, of course, Chelsea, she got added to the brokerage. She was there last season and she was friends with Christine. And baby, did she try to shake some things up this season? And then we also added Nicole. Now, here's the thing. Nicole was there for years. OK, we learned this quickly that she has been with the company for years and she's just now becoming a cast member on the show and then lastly we have Bree. Bree is a real estate agent I have no idea how long she's been doing real estate but according to her she has all these top a-lister clients all right cool y'all so I really want to go person by person and break down what I thought of them this season what their outfit choices said about them, and what I think about them moving forward. And honestly, I kind of want to go from least important to most important characters. So let's start off with Brett. Yes, we're going to start off with the other guy who is a part of the old group, but has very little to say. My only concern is, or should I say my question is, Brett, why were you here? Because it's crazy to me how all the responsibility fell onto Mary as if you weren't at work sometimes. That right there is what was crazy to me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know because I've been hearing rumors that he's no longer a part of the Oppenheimer group. Um, Yeah, if anybody knows, let me know in the comments. Is he still working with his brother? Um, I honestly feel like Brent's energy gives me, I'm actually serious about doing real estate, unlike my brother, who's just doing a lot of things for TV, if that makes sense. And I feel like he's not really with the drama and the shenanigans. But I feel like I like Brent, like he hasn't done anything that I hate it. But let's go ahead and move on to the next person. And you know who that's going to be? Davina. Why is Davina here, y'all? First off, I thought that she was actually going to be on the show because on the first episode, she was sitting in the uh, in the room at the office. I said, oh, OK, I guess Davina's still here. Baby, that was like the only time we saw her. We didn't see her again till like episode seven. And where was she at? Sitting in the office. Baby girl did not go to Palm Springs. Yeah, we don't need to see her anymore. 
<laughs> like, Davina, why were you here? Her fashions were terrible. Like, no, I'm sorry. It just didn't work out for you. You were not meant for TV. That sounds terrible, but it's the truth. All right, next person I want to talk about, that is going to be Heather. You guys, here's the thing about Heather. If Heather was to say, I state facts one more time, I was going to scream. She literally told Brie that she states facts at least five, six times. I'm like, girl, are you trying to convince us or are you trying to convince yourself that all you do is repeat what exactly what everybody has said prior, you know, to other people being privy to information? Please let me know. Now, I will say I'm happy that, you know, she had her baby. Well, she was pregnant on the show, but she's had her baby now. Um, you know, she seems like she's very happy, especially considering last season we talked about her relationship with Tarek. But on this season, we didn't mention a thing. Not a thing. Um, as far as her relationship with her daughter-in-law, I thought that was like the sweetest part about Heather's storyline was that, you know, at her baby shower, you know, Tarek's daughter, her now stepdaughter was there to say, you know, she's so happy that she's going to be having a baby brother and all this stuff, how much she loves Heather. That right there was a beautiful moment. Now, as far as Heather, what she brought to the table this season, I feel like because she was pregnant, she was very relaxed. Like the only thing that she did was bond with Brie. And let Brie know everything that Chelsea has been saying. Now, do I feel like Heather owed Chelsea any loyalty when it came down to, you know, telling Brie everything that Chelsea said? Honestly, I don't think that Heather is ever going to be that cool with Chelsea. Here's why. Because Chelsea started off coming in as Christine's friend. So the way she came in, I feel like all the girls had a guard up. And even now, they still don't mess with Chelsea like that. Like, she's cool, but I feel like because she was so tight with Christine, they all are still kind of like, uh, okay, not really sure if we can trust you, Chelsea, but we'll see. You know what I'm saying? Um, When it comes to her fashions, I will say that because she was pregnant, I feel like she dressed a bit more comfortable. Um, she definitely had on some questionable outfits for sure. But it wasn't as bad as some of the other ladies. I thought she looked the most beautiful when she had on the dress at her baby shower. Yeah, that was just so pretty. But let's go ahead and move on. You guys, the next person I have to talk about, it's going to be Emma. I feel like Emma really didn't bring much to this season besides being Chriselle's bestie. And that was it. Like, baby girl did not even try. Like, at least last season we got, like, her flirting with the the construction guy or, like, the guy who, like, owned the uh, penthouse that she was trying to sell. Like, I actually enjoyed that storyline. But this one here is like, okay... She's just going to follow Chris Shell around all day. That's cool. But I wanted more from her. Now, one thing that I have to mention is the conversation that she had with Jason. Baby, she ate Jason up. And I was here for it. Because Jason gets to skate around as if his ish don't stink. And it pisses me off. Like, baby, when I get to Jason, oh, I'm going to eat him alive. But we got to hold on a minute. Um, As far as her going in on him and the way he handled that other listing that they were on together, I feel like not only does it say a lot about him as a real estate agent, but just the way that he treats his employees. Like, the fact that he's like, oh, well, you know, you should have just called me or text me about the showing of the house. And it's like she said, you're getting the same emails that I'm getting. And if you know that this is like an A-list client, that should be one of your top priorities instead of parading around the world with your young girlfriend. But yeah, she ate him up. I was here for it. Now, unfortunately for me, like I said, I feel like I have nothing else to say about um, Emma. 
Like, as far as the drama that she had with Brie, like, I'm not really sure if that was real drama or if that was just for TV. Because it is strange for her to be like, oh, yeah, I hit your client up not to sell houses, but so I can give him empanadas. And it's like, girl, is he vegan? Because if he's not vegan, what are you talking about? Because isn't her empanada supposed to be like a vegan brand or something like that? Yeah, I kind of forgot she even sold empanadas. Also, I'm kind of like giving her a side eye because isn't she a white woman? Does she have any type of um, Latino, Latina background? Because why are you as a white woman making empanadas? Like, make that make sense for me? Because I'm not understanding. Nonetheless, oh, her fashions this season. Emma looked really cute this season. She definitely had some outfits. And I said, baby, whose house are you selling? Because you, you're not selling my house <laughs> wearing that. Like, you could be selling something else, but it's not it's not a house. Um, but she definitely had some cute looks. But the things that she wore to, like, a lot of, like, the open houses and, you know, to meet with clients. I'm like, girl, ain't no way. That only works because you're on this TV show. And, yeah, that's where it stops. Was she the worst when it came to the fashion this season? No. Were a lot of her outfits cute? Yes. They just weren't work appropriate. But let's go ahead and move on. So, y'all, we got to talk about Amanda. Now, here's my issue with Amanda. First things first. She now has a black hairstylist, and baby, she's going to hit y'all with every black hairstyle that she can. Baby girl had multiple different types of braids. Oh, and not only that, but she also hit us with Bantu knots. I said, who is your stylist, and what is happening here? Are you even part black to be rocking all these styles? Just curious. But nonetheless, when it comes to Amanda. A lot of times I'm just like, what are you here for? Like, I feel like this show is a check for her, but she does nothing at the Oppenheim group. Oppenheim group, sorry. <laughs> I feel like, because I know that her title is like interior decorator or whatever. We have yet to see her decorate a place this entire season. She didn't decorate anybody's spot. Not the house that Emma was listing. Not, no, any of the listings. And she definitely didn't even participate in decorating for Jason, you know, for his two penthouses. So I'm just like, girl, you were just around to be around. I feel like we didn't get much of like a story from her until we got to the end of the season. Amanda having a health scare, it's very serious, especially considering, you know, it could possibly be cancer and God willing, it's not. Um, I feel like her being completely open and vulnerable with Mary was pretty cool to see because her saying, you know, even though they told me this for three months, I just, you know, was avoiding it, not going to get testing, not going to do what I'm supposed to do because I was completely in shock. And keep in mind, she has kids. So it's like, of course, your mind goes to if I'm not here, what happens to my kids? You know what I mean? Now, besides that, um, I feel like when it comes to Amanda, we really didn't see much of her besides the few times that she chimed in in defense of Brie because she personally found no issue with, you know, Brie's situation with her ex, current, whatever Nick is to her. <laughs> so I feel like because she has had a situation where she has dated someone who was an athlete, someone who has some fame, some, you know, some money. The way she views things is very different than the other girls, especially considering when she did get a divorce, which I did she, was she married to that man? All I know is that he never tried to pay any type of child support or whatever, and she had to struggle and work her way back up. Now, when it comes to that, I can absolutely understand why she, you know, sided with Brie, on the fact that, you know, you never know what your partner is capable of. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure even though Bree signed up for Nick, 
you know, <laughs> having a kid with him, I'm pretty sure she didn't know that he was going to keep going and having multiple children. Same thing with um, Amanza. Even though she married her husband, had two kids by him, she didn't know that he was going to become so stingy and greedy and not want to take care of his kids or, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like we might see a budding friendship between Amanda and Bree in season seven, which I would not mind that happening. Now, I will say when it comes to Amanda's fashions, I have no idea where she was going with most of the outfits that she had on this season. Very questionable very questionable I'm like girl you usually look better than this what is happening but that was pretty much it for her oh actually no I will say that I did like that she kind of stuck up for Nicole when it came to Nicole getting the um drug test because honestly at that point nobody was cool with Nicole everybody was pretty much written her off they weren't messing with her so it was good that Amanda decided to make her own opinion as well as be like, you know what, what she did wasn't even that crazy and y'all would be doing it as well if someone accused you of being a drug addict. But let's go ahead and move on. All right, so the next person that I want to talk about is actually going to be um, Brie. So when it comes to Brie, I feel like she came on this show with a point to prove and that was that, yes, I am Nick Cannon's baby mama, but I'm about my business. So what y'all not about to do is try to play in my face. I feel like that was her energy this entire time. Baby girl came in ready to work. First of all, I will say to me, Brie had the best wardrobe when it came to I'm trying to actually sell a house. Because, or even when she came into the office, matter of fact, when she came into the office, she made sure she looked like she had a job. The rest of the girls, I don't know where they were going. But, like, she would wear, like, a two-piece suit. But, like, her blouse was not a bikini top. It was actually a shirt. <laughs> so, I respected it. I mean, some of her outfits were definitely questionable, just like the rest of the ladies. But, she actually looked like she had a job at some point. Now, according to her, she has A-list high-end clients. I have no idea how true that is because we did not see her sell not a one house. However, she did bring people onto the show that I have heard of. We've heard of Sweetie for sure. And Pooh Bear, I remember seeing Pooh Bear years, years, years ago working in the studio with all types of artists. Like he's actually a very well-known, well-known songwriter and producer. So I'm not even going to knock her. I will say that she does bring an element to the show that I think that the other girls don't have. And that is the celebrity clientele because she is in certain rooms and in certain spaces that, you know, she knows these people. Or at least she says that she knows them and then they just come onto the show to show off their house. Now, when it comes to her situation with Nick... I don't think that she wanted that to be a focal point on the show, but girl, you should have known somebody was going to talk about it. And baby Chelsea was riding you about your baby daddy, but you handled yourself. Because at the end of the day, if that's the type of man that you want to sleep with and tolerate, that's going to be on you. However, don't play in our face and act like he really be coming home to only you. Because if that was the case, he wouldn't have all these multiple other women pregnant at the same time as you. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just call a thing a thing here. As far as her checking Chelsea multiple times, I was here for it. Because Chelsea, to me, seemed like she really had a personal vendetta against Brie unnecessarily. She saw this girl come in. I, I don't know if she thought that she was just supposed to be the only new girl or what. But she saw Brie as a threat to me. And the fact that she had brought two friends of hers that had previously worked with Brie, I think that she thought that that was going to stir up some mess. And Brie shut that down. Even though she shut it down in a team meeting, she was not going to play with you, Chelsea. And that's one thing that I need you to realize. Brie was not here to play with you. Now, do I like um, her friendship with Heather? Yes. However, I feel like Heather is clinging on to Brie for relevancy. I feel like once... Heather saw how much of like a firecracker Brie can be. She latched herself onto her because what other purpose does Heather have on the show anymore, y'all? 
when you think of the grand scheme of the show, everybody has kind of linked up with somebody and she has nobody to link up with that matches her personality because she used to rock heavy with like Chriselle or whatever. She don't rock heavy with her no more. Chriselle has linked up with Emma and now they're besties. Mary, we already know she gonna ride for Jason till the wheels fall off. Amanda is kind of floating around. She kind of, you know, tries to be the middleman between everybody. Heather, she's not going to link up with Nicole because she still wants to be in Chriselle's good graces. Who else is really going to rock with Heather like that? Nobody. I mean, no offense to her, but I know like she has like the husband now. She has the kids, but I just don't feel like people really about to rock with her. Nonetheless, back to Brie. Um, I will say this when it comes to Brie and Chelsea and their drama, I completely understand why Brie decided to go ahead and leave Palm Springs because there was no point in her staying. And I will say that I think it was hilarious that her and Heather decided to tag team and serve Chelsea up a good cup of girl, we not fucking with you. So don't try to play us because first Heather talked to her and then Brie finished her off. I was like, yeah, okay. I definitely see why they added Brie to this equation. I think that Brie was a great addition to the show um, because she is about her business, but also she, you're not about to play with her. So I know that they had to replace Christine in some type of way. So I feel like they tried to make Brie seem like she was going to come in as a villain, but she's not really the villain. Chelsea is, and Nicole was a villain as well. Hell, and Chriselle. But let me go ahead and slide on over to Chelsea. I have to start with the fashions. I don't think I liked anything Chelsea wore this entire season. I think she's a beautiful girl. However, nothing that she wore screamed, I do real estate. It screamed, oh, I have a stylist and they told me to put this on, even if it's not practical at all. I mean, we literally saw her wear multiple Diesel outfits. And I'm like, are you getting a check from Diesel for wearing this? Because please make it make sense. Nonetheless, her actions this season, I have to give a side eye to. Because it's just like, Chelsea, why are you so worried and involved with Bree's personal life? Go see if, like, you know, a man's in need help with her two kids. Go see if... um. Emma need help selling empanadas. Go see what else is going on. Like, why are you harping so hard on Brie to the point that you decided to bring in two people that you knew were at one point friends with her to see if you can stir up some mess and probably get some uh, secrets out of them so that you can bring it to the group and spread drama about Brie. I didn't appreciate that. And I'm trying to rock with her because she's a black girl, but I don't know if I can. I really don't. Like, I understand her saying, you know, Brie, you are a good person. Why would you settle for a person like Nick Cannon and all the stuff that he has going on? But you just met her. This isn't someone who you've been friends with for five years. And you like, girl, you don't need to be with this man. That's not the situation here. You just met her. Get to know her. See if she a cool girl. Because you have no idea who Brie really is. The only thing you know is who her baby's father is. And that does not define who she is. That's that. Then on top of this, okay, when it comes down to the Chriselle and Nicole situation, one thing that I will say, I respect the way that Mary removed herself away from the situation. However, Chelsea, I give a side eye to. Because Chelsea, you kept asking questions and you kept sitting there. And then when you're in front of Chriselle and everybody else, now you want to sit up here and be like, well, I didn't ask you to tell me about how you went and got a drug test. I didn't ask you all these things. It's like, but girl, but you, she was literally having a conversation with you and she was explaining to you why she did what she did. Like, why are you playing in her face now? Like, I feel like without Christine, Chelsea is trying to find where she fit in this group of people because she works for the O group now. Christine is no longer there, and that was her end to the show and to, you know, working with this group. But now that Christine is out, I feel like she don't know what to do. She don't know who to be friends with. Like, she's trying to squeeze her way 
into being friends with these people, but I feel like everybody's already locked in. So they're not really open to her in that way. Because you don't see nobody having those side conversations with Chelsea. Like the only one that we really saw was her have a conversation with Emma about how she grew up and how, you know, her parents went through all the things that they went through and why she takes family so serious. I get all that, but I feel like that conversation shouldn't have even been with Emma. She honestly should have had that conversation with somebody like Amanza. Or maybe she should have been bold enough to pull Bree to the side and have a conversation with her. Y'all should go to lunch. See if y'all mesh well. Do something like that. But no, you were so busy being against Bree and who her baby daddy is. You should have rethought that. Nonetheless, I feel like this season you came out looking like a villain and you didn't even have to. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to point out about Chelsea before I move on. Y'all, what happened to her husband? That is a whole nother man. That You cannot tell me that that's the same man that we saw when we first met them as a couple. She done, re, she done re-glamorized that man. I mean, y'all let me know in the comments. Does he love a different person or not? Because I don't feel like I'm lying about that. But let's go ahead and move on. I feel like that's all I got for Chelsea. Uh, moving forward, I just want her to find some type of friendship, like a real friendship, out of some of these ladies. Because it feels like she's around, but they don't really mess with her like that. All right, y'all, let's just go ahead and talk about Mary. Because I actually felt bad for Mary this season. Partially. Some of it she brought on herself. Mary has stepped it up. I will say I do like her hair this season. You know, it's longer than what she usually does. I'm here for it. However, when Jason first came to you and said, oh, you're going to cover the office, you should have said, excuse me, what Brett got going on? Because I'm already handling your properties. I'm already trying to maintain my relationships with my deals, Do you know, sell the houses that I need to sell. Why do I need to take control of the office as if your brother, your bald head brother, is not sitting right here? All right, because this is a female-led cast, and Brett don't really mess with y'all like that. Now, one thing I will say, when it comes to Mary, baby girl does not handle conflict well at all. But here's my thing. When you had all that fire and smoke for um, Christine, where's that energy? I need that big energy for you to crack down on Chriselle and Nicole because that was so out of line the way both of them were going at each other at Chelsea's uh broker's opening both of them should have been reprimanded it should not be a Nicole you need to stop Chriselle I'm not gonna say nothing to you because you're the victim I'm not gonna say anything to you no both parties needed to stop and why didn't you have a conversation where you brought those girls in sooner rather than later? Like, I don't know if she thought that, you know, the drama was just going to subside. But baby girl, that is not what happened, especially not with these two ladies. Then on top of that, y'all, let's get to Jason's properties real quick. Do y'all think Romaine really worked on those properties or was he just there to be around? Because I'm trying to figure out when did he become a contractor? When did he get his license as a contractor? When did any of this happen? Because last time I checked, he was just married to Mary. That was it. That's all we knew. But now he got a big boy job. And I'm like, when did this happen? When did this occur that he could do all of this? Or are we making it seem like he's the main guy when there's actually other contractors who are working on this house? I mean, this penthouse. You know what I'm saying? Nonetheless... Um, I feel like Mary, unfortunately, this season, especially when she had that breakdown, everything became too much for her because she had already said that, you know, she's trying to have a baby with Romaine and I'm just like, girl, don't stress yourself out playing with these girls who are just doing stuff for camera time. You over here having a whole breakdown while they about to go out clubbing. Do you see how crazy that is? These heifers ain't stressed out about nothing, but you just had a full breakdown because you are sick and tired of them arguing unnecessarily. But like I said, 
Jason left you in charge when unfortunately you are not equipped to handle those types of confrontations because they're confrontations that he created. Now, as far as the Bree and um, Chelsea situation, you definitely should have dipped that in the butt and say, hey, Chelsea, just leave that situation alone. You know, if you want to talk to Bree about work, that's fine, but don't talk about her personal life. Boom, we could have been done. But that Chrishell and Nicole situation, the main, main issue in that is Jason. And the fact that Jason couldn't even take any type of accountability when you came to him and said, listen, I have enough going on and this is something that you created. And he basically shut it down like, well, that's why I left you in charge. When I went on vacation, that was for you to figure out. That right there is when you should have said, well, sir, I'm only clocking in. To do my job, that's selling houses. I no longer want to be the manager of this foolishness because it's a madhouse and you stirred all this stuff up. Because that's really what happened. Also, I want to point out the fact that in this season, um, I think that Mary finally is seeing who some people really are. I feel like one thing that rattled um, Mary was when Chriselle was like, oh, at your bachelorette party, referring to Mary, this girl was doing all of these drugs, all this stuff. And here's the thing. Don't say like she was the only one singled out, just out here, out of her mind on drugs. Usually, people do things in a group setting. So if she was doing coke, that's insinuating there was other people that were there that was doing coke. Okay, that's insinuating that there were other people there doing other drugs who were probably also in real estate. That's just like how Mary was like, wait a second, because you're making it seem like the whole group was doing something. I completely understand why Mary became very defensive in that moment. Because as much as we want to pretend like that allegation ain't serious, it is. But we're going to get to that when I get to uh, Chriselle and Nicole. Now, as far as Mary... Stepping away from Nicole, once she realized that Nicole may take legal action, I get it. She don't want to be called into court. I get it, girl. I absolutely do. Um, But I do think that she saw Chris Shell's real colors once we got to the end of the season. Because, girl, Chris Shell, she had no interest in trying to sell that house for y'all. She's like, listen, that's what y'all got going on, but not what I have going on. And I think that Mary is starting to see... That, you know what, maybe Chriselle isn't who I thought she was. She came off as very sweet. She also made it seem like, you know, she's ride or die for this uh, real estate group. But no, Mary, that's you. I think that Mary needs to realize that everyone does not have the same relationship with Jason as she does. All because you are ride or die for Jason, that don't mean everybody else is. So you going to have to deal with that, girl. Now, next season, we shall see what's going on with Mary. Hopefully, she's having a baby because, you know, she really wants a baby with Romaine. But we shall see. Y'all, let's go ahead and knock out Nicole. Baby, let me... (laughs) Nicole, you were set up for failure when you got on this show. The fact that you've been with the old group for all those years and you were never seen on the show... That should have told you something. Then for the producers to set you up and say, girl, bring up this drama with Chris Shell from three years ago. Girl, the fans of this show is not about to rock with you, especially number one, you coming for Chris Shell, who a lot of people love. And number two is drama from three years ago. That means you should have been on this show three seasons ago. Now, do I think that there's some truth to what Nicole may have said about Jason putting Chriselle on a listing because he had a crush on her? Absolutely. Baby, when I get to... Oh, I'm getting to Jason, y'all. Don't you worry, because I'm about to lay into him. But I definitely believe that he could have possibly put Chriselle onto a listing because he has a crush on her. Because we see the way he moves around women. He has a very interesting way of moving. Next thing I want to point out about Nicole. Girl... What I needed for you to do is stand 10 toes down on what you had to say and not let Chriselle play in your face. Because when Chriselle called you out your name, you didn't have no comebacks. Girl, you should have said something, especially once y'all got to that Palm Springs argument. And Chriselle, she called you a druggie. 
Why didn't you at least reach for the glass and splash water on her face? I mean, come on. Make it, if we're going to make TV, baby, we're going to make TV. And um, you definitely could have splashed her with some water <laughs> or something. But nonetheless, did I feel bad for her when she went to go cry in her room? Absolutely. Let me tell y'all why. This is where you have to separate reality TV and real reality. Because no offense to Chris Shell. Chris Shell, I want to say she had just got her license when this show started up. You got to look at this from a bigger picture. She was married to a person who was a famous actor. It looked great to have Chriselle on this show, right? When it comes to Nicole, on the other hand, she had already been actually working in real estate. Like she does real estate for real, for real. That's why she's just now coming in season six, right? If she actually has clientele, and she actually has people who she's actually selling houses to. What Chris Shell said about her is actually very damaging. As much as the girls were just like, oh, that's just something I will laugh off. Ha ha ha. No, 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 no. If I really sell real estate, I don't have time for my clients to look at me as if I'm a druggie. I don't have time for my clients to be looking me up and down being like, mm, I don't know. Is she high today? You know what I'm saying? That is damaging to her real life, not her little reality TV life. And I think that is where a lot of people are missing Nicole's point as to why she went and got a drug test. She went and got a drug test to prove, no, I'm not on drugs. I don't care if she did all kind of stuff four, five years ago when you saw her at Mary's party. I don't even care if you saw her doing drugs right in front of you 30 minutes ago. That was hitting below the belt, and that was something that could have been detrimental to Nicole's actual real life. And for her to go ahead and talk to her lawyers, I don't see a problem with that. Because at the end of the day, Chriselle, if you want to take it this far, then let's go all the way this far. Because ain't no coming back once you keep slandering me. Because this isn't just a, oh, you slept with the boss to get a listing. I mean, it was true. She did date the boss. That's very different than saying somebody is a drug addict. <laughs> Nonetheless, Nicole, unfortunately, I feel like this is not even a show for you, if I want to be honest. I think that you may be a great agent. However, this is not, you're not reality TV material. You're not. And that's okay. It's not meant for everybody. And you're one of those people. Now, as far as Nicole's fashions, they were whatever, honestly. It wasn't too much. It wasn't too little. It was just whatever. Um, one thing that I will say is that even though Mary kept trying to tell us that she was good friends with Nicole, it did not seem like it at all. It seemed like they were cordial because they worked together, but they were not besties, as Mary tried to say. Now, moving forward into season seven, Either that's going to have to be Nicole's last season or she's going to have to find a friend on the show because Nicole don't have no friends. Everybody is Chriselle's friend. Everyone has already decided to take Chriselle's side and there's nobody messing with Nicole right now, or at least as far as season six goes. I don't know what they do in real life, but I think that she's going to need a friend on the show because if she doesn't have a friend, then this is just going to be the second coming of how they treated Christine and how Christine was on an island by herself. Yeah, I'm not interested in that all over again. But let me go ahead and move on to Chriselle. Y'all, Chriselle came back and said, I'm here for the Selling Sunset check, but I don't give up about none of y'all. I don't give up about these houses. I don't give up about Jason. And I'm just here to be on TV. I do not care about the Oppenheim group at all. <laughs> I mean, I don't blame her, but it is so obvious and clear. She don't care about selling no houses no more. She's a reality star. Like, it is so clear. One thing that I will say is that I'm happy that she's happy in her relationship with G, G Flip, right? I think it's G Flip. Um, They seem to be really happy. I want to know the age difference because G Flip looks like they are way younger than Chriselle. Y'all, what's the age gap? But nonetheless, I just think that Chriselle should be happy in her relationship. 
I think that she should go be with G Flip, go tour in Australia, go do that because your heart is no longer in real estate. It's not. Let's let that dream go. As far as Chris Shell being on the show, or should I say in the office, baby girl hardly showed up for work. Hardly. And I definitely feel like part of the reason why she didn't want to show up to work was because Jason was there. And as we know, she dated Jason. They thought that this was going to be the greatest thing ever. And it's like, no, girl, now you are girlfriend number three who has dated this man from this office. And that's just the three that we know about. Okay, when it comes to Chriselle and this drama with Nicole, I definitely feel like Chriselle was blindsided by Nicole's comments, for sure, because honestly, Nicole's issue is not with Chriselle. It's really with Jason. I definitely believe that Chriselle is just responding like, girl, you coming at me sideways when I haven't done anything to you, which she hasn't. It's not her fault that Jason decided to give her the listing. Girl, move on. And when it comes down to her calling that girl a drug addict, though, that was definitely taking it far. And the fact that she did not want to take any account- accountability as to how far she took it, I'm like, okay, Chriselle, like, for real, for real. Y'all need to have a conversation where you say, you know what, that was a bit far for me to take it. Because I definitely feel like at some point, Nicole and Chriselle can come to an understanding but honestly, because they never had that conversation with Jason themselves, it's going to take a while. Because I feel like if they both get together, they will realize that Jason was the common denominator and he was the problem as to why they're not getting along. I really believe that. Um, I feel like that's pretty much all I have about Chris Shell this season and the fact that she don't want to be here no more. <laughs> I feel like she does not want to work at that job no more because she's in love and that's totally fine oh one thing else that I want to point out was the fact that Chriselle's fashions eh they were Chriselle I don't know Chriselle's fashions have always been a little off to me but they were all right they were whatever you know what I mean um one thing I will say is that I've been hearing that her and Amanda are not really cool And I cannot wait to see in season seven why they're not cool. Because that is very interesting to me. I'm like, finally, let's give Amanda some storyline. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. One more thing about Chriselle before I move along. I really wanted her to be honest with Mary when they were talking about selling that property and how we need all hands on deck. I really didn't want her to say, girl, what I look like selling a property for Jason? Like, I feel like that is the real reason why Chriselle did not want to put in any effort is to try to help sell that property. Girl, this is selling Jason's property, and I have no interest in that. I mean, she don't have no interest in real estate, but she damn sure is not trying to sell a property for Jason so that he can make his money back. If you don't get the f- out of here with that. Now, one thing that I will say, because is going to be my last thing about Chriselle, is she definitely ain't the call up multiple times. But let me tell you where all that energy should have went, y'all. It should have went to Jason. And that is what brings me to Jason. Baby, when I tell you I was so fed up with this man, I was so fed up with this little man. Because he stirred a bunch of pots and then removed himself away swiftly and professionally, okay? Last time that I checked, Jason is the one who runs this office, correct? It's his company all of that. However, he decided instead of taking care of business, instead of running the company, instead of making sure everything was going good, he passed it all off to Mary. So that way she can handle it and he can go parade around with his 24 year old girlfriend. Keep in mind this old ass man is what 20 something years older than her. Sir, you're a fucking creep, okay? Let's start there. And then secondly, for you to hand your business down to not your brother because you already know he don't want to be involved with the foolishness, but then you're going to put it on Mary's plate. 
Here's the thing. You already have Mary working extremely hard to begin with. But then when you see that the main issues that are occurring in the office actually revolve around some sh- that you did back in the day, you going to remove yourself from it? No, nah, sir. You are the one who not only dated Nicole, you also dated Chrishell, hell, and you also dated Mary. You don't see a problem with that? Where's HR when you need them? Because all of that is a problem, first off. Then secondly, you put Chrishell on a listing with Nicole. You did not probably ask Nicole. You probably just did it just because it said, hey, I'm going to put Chrishell on this. Yeah. Nicole probably knows the signs when you like one of the other employees because she says she was the one original girlfriend. So she probably peeped that back in the day, he probably did the same shit with Mary. He probably put Mary on a listing because he liked her and then they started dating. Well, running game again, round two, here comes Chriselle. He doing the same thing. I really feel like that is where Nicole is coming from. Now, she's taking it out on Chriselle, but Chriselle don't know that that's the game that Jason plays, baby. So you can't take that out on her. So if the place sold, of course, Chriselle's going to be happy because, you know, she worked on it and she feels like I was a part of a team. Not knowing that, no, this was just game that Jason was running. Another thing that Jason, what you should have been handling, Chriselle, why are you not coming into the office? Do you work here or do you not? Because last time I checked, wasn't it an issue when Christine wasn't coming into the office because nobody was really messing with her like that? So you had to make a decision if she was going to work there or not. Why aren't we making that same decision with Chriselle? Oh, it's because you still have feelings for that woman, but you playing around with that 24 year old. Because there's no way you're going to tell me that Chriselle still got a damn job when she don't come into work. Chriselle only came into the office maybe, what, two, three times? If that, I might be pushing it at that number. Like, it's crazy to me that we literally saw him sit down with Chriselle because Chriselle felt some type of way that Nicole said that Jason had a crush on her. And Chriselle, for some reason, is registering in her mind like, How dare you say that he had a crush on me? I was a married woman. Girl, she said that he had a crush on you. Not that you were doing anything with Jason. That could very well be possible that Jason had a crush on you and there was some favoritism shown. He has done it before. I'm pretty sure Nicole knows the signs. She's been working for this man for years. And of course he gonna say in your face, Of course, that's not why I gave you the listing. Of course not. Because that would make him look like what? A very problematic boss. Okay? And if we're being honest, he is a very problematic boss. Because let's slide on over to the way he treated Mary this season. How is it that you get to parade around different countries with your current girlfriend while you're letting one of your employees take over everything? And when I say everything, Mary had to handle not only her own listings, she had to handle the entire office as well as his property that was being worked on by her husband. That was a lot for that one person to take on. And you should already know because you've known her this long that Mary doesn't do conflict well. So why would you put her in charge of that? Make that make sense, Jason. Because at the end of the day, why was it her responsibility to make sure that your property got done? No, sir, that's your responsibility. That's between you and Romaine. That ain't got nothing to do with her. And then, oh, let's get to this thing that he had with Emma. Because, baby, the way Emma ate him up, I was here for it. Because he deserved it. Sir, you have been MIA. You have not been doing your job. You promised the client that you were going to be involved and hands-on while you were frolicking around Italy with your girlfriend. While you left you know, Emma to do all of the work for this property, even though you was probably going to take the majority of the commission. So when Emma actually called him out, especially about how he was like, I mean, I just have like 500 emails. Why didn't you text me that I should come to a showing? It's not like you would have been available because you were out of the country, remember? And then on top of that, sir, she's busy as well. So don't think that you are above her just because you're the owner of the company. Like, no, y'all both are busy people. But at the end of the day, y'all both decided that y'all were going to go in partnership with this property listing and get it sold. You didn't get it sold. 
Like, it is what it is. But don't sit up here and try to blame Emma for it when you have to take up the majority of the blame. And it's crazy to me that we got to see him go on a double date with his girlfriend and Chelsea and her husband. And number one, I said, is this even appropriate? Number two, it's crazy to me how Chelsea sat up there and felt some type of way and kind of cried a little bit about how, you know, things went with her and Brie. Do I think that she needed to cry about it? No, you're just upset because you got called out and you thought that you were going to be the big bad wolf and people were going to go run and scared and that's not what happened. But when she did tell Jason, you know, how she felt, he's like, oh, you know, I kind of feel bad about everything. Sir, that's because you're not in the office. You have avoided the office. Matter of fact, you and Chriselle, y'all are the same person right now. Y'all are avoiding work. Y'all are avoiding the office. Y'all want the check from the TV show, but y'all still want to live y'all best life. Like for season seven, I'm going to need for y'all to switch some things up. Jason, I'm going to need you to actually clock in and work because there's no way that you went to go frolic wherever you wanted to go with your little girlfriend for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. And you expect it for so much to be happening in the office. No, the girls are going to run amok. They're going to run wild. The only thing that I liked about Jason this season was his penthouses that he had to sell. I thought that they came out beautiful. Romaine did a great job. And that's all I got. Ain't got no more. Now, my hopes for season seven is that all the ladies bring it. I hope we have more practical outfits. And we shall see what they have in store for us. I know this review is super long. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to y'all in my next review. Bye, guys.